Really? And if you absolutely <laughs> loved watching that video, the beautiful lady in red strumming the guitar with her fingers is sitting with us here in the studio today. She's here to talk to us about her music, her journey, and of course, we're going to put her on the spot, and she will definitely play the guitar for us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Silso with us in the studio. Hello, thank you. Hello. So this is a gathering <laughs> of lawyers, three lawyers, one set. No, Funny I think enough. it's two and a half. Uh, so who is it half? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, did oh, you I think all of us are not even in our life. Uh, did you go to law school? Uh, yes, so. You were called to bar? Yes. Wow. What do you mean? So let's talk about your transition from law into music for starters. Ah, long story. I read law, went to law school. I just wanted to do it. Like, I wanted to finish what I started. Because I didn't want a situation where I just read law and then they ask me anything in the legal profession. I have no idea. So I read law quite all right, but then I really didn't want to work in a law firm. I never, I've never worked in a law firm. My only experience with the legal practice was when I served. I worked in the ministry. Oh, really? So maybe we should ask you from the beginning, why did you study law? Because I already asked her that question behind the scenes, so I should ask you. <laughs> I got damp form. <laughs> when it was time to fill the form, and I thought and thought and thought, I was like, what is the highest, you know, art, you know the categorizations, art and mm. humanity? I just said law, and I... Okay. Law, wrote a jam, passed, and that was it. Oh, really? That's nice. So it had nothing to do with your parents no. saying you must read law? Because I know no. a lot of people who read law, that's always My been the issue for them. My parents didn't have any, they didn't have much to say. They just knew that. So you okay. just went there because... To go to Bobas Calabati It wasn't like that. I think I just loved I just loved the idea of being a lawyer. Like it was just a fantasy. Just like the rest of us. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. I think just... I think the legal profession just broadens your mind. So yeah. you can actually become anything after studying. At the end of the day. Yeah. So but how has your experience been, you know, with that time of transition from you saying, Yes, I'm a lawyer, I've been called to bar, but I want to do music? Because of course you have to be passionate about it yeah, to have taken that actually... bold step. I was actually, I've always been passionate about music. Okay. So when I was in school, I think it was in my 200 level, late 100 level, I okay. bought my guitar. Wow. And then my mom asked, asked me if <laughs> it was part of my curriculum, and I said yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, my own personal curriculum. Ah, no, mom, I'm sorry. Have you confessed <laughs> to your mom now that you didn't? Of course, she now knows that. That's why I got the guitar. I'm, I'm sure she knew then, but then she was just trying to be a mother and, you know, support you. How long did it take yes. you to learn how to play the guitar, and were you self-taught? Yeah, I was self-taught. So I, I bought the guitar. Actually, I think what inspired me to get the guitar was the fact that I was surrounded by a lot of guitars, and they were all guys. Oh. So buying the guitar, I was thinking that the one, I'll get one of them to teach me, but it never happened. They just kept, I don't know, they just kept avoiding me. I don't know why. <laughs> well, so I decided to like get a material, like a, a book. It's actually a book okay. that shows how you hold chords, okay. and, that, and that's how I started. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. And how long did that take you? <sighs> I didn't keep tabs. I just know that one day I started playing well. <laughs> wow. Like, yes. you can't say if it's a year or six months or mm. nine months. Because I know I for people first, it differs. I think the first time I wrote a song was when I knew that I was good enough. So I, I was good enough to create chords, like, create okay. music around chords. So okay. chords that were very spontaneous. Okay. So I think that was, like, about a year after. Like, oh, wow. About a year after. Because it was during holidays, so I guess it was. No, that's, that's, that's beautiful. So maybe we should talk about the time when you decided to take music professional, when you knew that this music, two of us, one of us <laughs> is going to down this month. Okay. <laughs> when did you decide that you wanted to start doing music professionally? Um, that was 2016. So I'd been, uh, I came to Lagos initially in 2014. Um, I wanted to do music, but then I was, I was kind of scared because, I mean, I read law, my friends have spent so much on law school fees, and I'll now tell them that, I'm sorry, Dad, I want to follow my passion. So I, I was really scared, but I came to Lagos because of music. And then I think what I, what I decided to do then was to get a job so that it won't look like I came to Lagos to do music. So after about two years, I couldn't... I where couldn't, were you working? KPMG. So where were you based before you came to Lagos? I was, in, I was based in Abuja. I was doing humanitarian work in an NGO. Oh, that's beautiful. That's wonderful, actually. So you left a job in KPMG to pursue a career in music. And I'm not laughing at you at all because I also, you, you realized what you wanted and you had to make a huge sacrifice. Yeah. You are finding it funny. Let's look at that time when, you know, when you were making this decision. What were your colleagues saying to you? What were your friends saying to you? What were your parents saying to you that you're leaving a job in KPMG to pursue music that you don't know if you will blow? 
Well, I think if you're in the, like, if, you're, if you were in, my colleague, you would have supported me. Because a lot of them just felt like, some, there are days I'll come to work and I'll just say, hey, I wrote a new song, do you want to hear it? And they listen to it and they're like, what is, when are you going to take this thing seriously? That, they all kept saying that. They, they, and then it was a huge dilemma because I was really enjoying my job. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the, at the point where I resigned was when I was beginning to, like, enjoy, because I just got into a new unit. So I, I just didn't want to get carried away. So I, I felt like, you know, if I don't leave this thing and face this music, I probably will never face music. So I just had to make the decision. And for your parents, how have they taken it so far? <laughs> No, because I know how parents can be, actually. <laughs> Up until this if, year. If we have to check, law school fees right now is 295000 That's 300 k approximately. And as the other things, your textbook, Half a million laptop. naira, truthfully. And the prayer they prayed for it to pass. The emotional trauma. Oh I mean, God. this Fast time, this season, some years ago, you were being called to bar. Because yes, it's called to November. bar season. Yeah, November 20th. Yeah, exactly, enough. so. Yeah, that's, wow, that's a long time. Well, my parents, initially, they were, they were angry. Like, I didn't tell my parents the first year. Like, I couldn't. I told my brothers, I'm, I'm the last child and the only girl. So my brothers kind of understood, and they were very supportive. But my parents, like when they found out, <laughs> they couldn't understand. For the next, the next two years, up until this year, my dad would ask me every year what I was doing in Lagos. It was like, wow. I know you told me you're doing music, but what exactly are you doing? In? So it was, it got to a point where I had to tell my dad to stop, like, making me feel bad about what I was doing. I knew that he didn't have, like, I couldn't get his full support, but I, all I wanted him to do was just to chill. Like, it's okay, you don't support me, but then don't, don't drown out my opportunities. I was surprised when he called me, like, I think it was two months ago to pray for me. I, I think that was, like, <laughs> that was, like, the best thing that's happened to me in this, like, in this journey. And I think it's so important that you ha we have these conversations because parents need to understand that their support means a lot to their kids. In whatever chosen path your kid or your child has decided to do, your support is very important. It's very key. Imagine how heartbroken you felt all the while. Yeah. You know, not I couldn't go home. I couldn't really go. I, I didn't like going home for Christmas. Oh, dear. I just like, I'll think about it. I'm like, am I sure I want to go through this again? So it was draining. But it, I think it made me strong enough to be sure that I wanted to do Let's this. look at, give us a, 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 a picture of what it's been like. I know there have been the happy times. We'll come to the happy times. But let's first of all look at the sad times, the most difficult times in oh your career God. so far. What are some of the things you've had to do, the times you've had to cry? Let's get to see some of your challenges so far. Ah, times I've had to cry. I think, okay, um, the times I've had to cry will be the times when I'm really broke, like especially when I have like an event to perform in that is free, and then I don't even have money to get there. Like The fact that I can't even get to the venue to perform is what not I don't even care if they're paying me or not like mm. can I just get there and be heard like that is I think that's one of the saddest uh, moments that I've had in this journey mm, beyond that I, I, I think that's it my sister I understand what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> we've been there <laughs> oh Lord Jesus can the Lord is our strength so um, I, I'm, I'm glad you're mentioning this because yeah, we find that the... I can, I can I just remember the one okay. I think another sad moment for me this year was when I lost my friend he was my producer, it was a lot of things. My producer, bassist, wow. sometimes he played the drums for me. He died in April. If he had cancer. Yeah, if you're. Wow. I like, I, I think at that, at that point, I just put a pause <laughs> on a lot of things. I said, you know what, what's the point? Like, it was like starting again because most of what I am today were, were things he has helped me build. Like, he has been, and he was an encouraging person, like someone who encouraged me wow. greatly. Someone who just, I don't know, he was selfless. So having to lose him was like starting again because I didn't have any other person to fall back on. So I was like, okay. Well, that's Everybody that's had something to say about if you had something sweet to say. Yes, I remember so. Johnny Drill giving him a tribute as well. Yes. And everybody just had something really positive to say about yeah. him. And we hope that he's so rest in peace. Yes. And it just reminds us that time on earth is not too long. So whatever time you have, mm -hmm. what matters is how you make people feel. You know, the kind of impression you True. leave in people's hearts. When you die, what will people say about you? And I'm really excited that you're sharing these downtimes with us because some people think, you know, because they see you on TV, they see you at shows playing, and they think till has blown. The same way they think a lot of us have blown. Ah. So it's very important for us to let people know that in the pursuit of your dreams, it will not always be easy. It True. will be difficult. I mean, you've complained True. about times you've been invited to perform at events, and you don't have t to get there. But that is the reality. That's what it's like. 
to pursue your dreams. Mm. So those of you who want to leave your careers <laughs> to pursue your passion, I think the Count first thing... your cause. Maybe we should ask you, what do you wish you had done differently to have made life easier for you? What do I wish I had? I think I would have appreciated if I had a manager or something, because I'm, I'm very independent to the point that I don't even have a manager. What of savings? Savings? Oh, yeah, when I resigned, I didn't really save. I just, it was, it was pretty spontaneous, because it was like, there was never going to be a perfect time. Mm. And I think I had just paid for a professional exam. So, and then I just paid rent. It was really bad. Like, I don't really, really want to start painting it bad. Like, the whole experience was, like, the whole mm. experience so far is bad. But I became homeless, like, that same month that I resigned. So it was crazy. It was a, a former colleague that really stood by me that, in that season. Like, she's really supportive. She literally gave me a house to stay. And just, wow. like, so <laughs> you have to count your cost, basically. Because if you don't have the passion, you will burn out. <laughs> Yeah, That's actually what happens when you're actually... No, but it's the truth. It's what happens when you're surrounded by good people yeah. who, who will encourage you. That's why the main thing is always having positive energy around you all the time. People who, even when everybody else, or most people will say, this thing is not making sense. Don't, don't take this step. Why would you want to leave this that's putting food on the table for you and go and do that that you are not even sure... You are going to do By so By the end well of the day, in... life is full of risk. If you yeah. don't take risk, how would you Yeah, know? if you don't take risk, the truth is, you would never, if you never try, you never you know. You never know. You and it's better, it's better to have situations of, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm thinking, what if I did? You yeah. know, it's, sometimes yeah. it's better to have just had this experience, learned your lessons. And I think one advice I would take away from what you've ex explained so far is, just in case you're planning to pursue your passion and you have a steady nine to five, have a savings. Savings, very, very important very for you to have a savings. Like so you have us. something to fall back on. Statistics show that most of the entrepreneurs who switch from nine to five to having their full-time business end up funding, 70% of them fund it by themselves from their own personal savings. Yeah. So have, a, have your own savings. We had a fantastic conversation with Money Africa a few days ago, which we'll be bringing to you next week, where you get to learn a lot of financial wisdom. So stick around and, uh, and get to watch that. Let's still speak with Silso. So. We've talked about the sad times. Let's talk about the happy times. The ones you treasure, the, the ones you consider your, the climax of your career thus far, because there's still much more that lies ahead. Let me think, there are a lot to... Okay, share two with us. I think one, one moment was where I had a performance at Hard Rock Cafe. That okay. was 2016. And while I was performing, like, I don't even know what happened. The excitement in the room was, it was like elect electric. And then there was this white guy at the gallery. He literally was screaming, come up. If these guys don't want to listen to you, I will listen to you. Aww. And then I didn't answer him. He got that money, like he got a collected an offering. <laughs> then walked down and then put it in my hands. Like I was like, it was the moment that that was a very, wow. like a very cherished moment for me. That's great. What other moments? Let me see. I think it was when my song was featured in Rumor Has It. Yeah. Oh, yes, Rumor has is a very lovely... And then I started seeing yeah. comments, and people were saying, who is this person? Like, it was so perfect for the scene. And then I started getting, like, reviews. People were saying nice things about my song, Baby Girl. So I think those are the two. Still so, thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. We've had such a great time. Yay. All right, this is where we draw the cutting on today's show. But first of all, let's get to hear what Still so has to offer. So this song is titled Lover. I put it out in August. And Lover? Yeah. Who did you write it for? Lover, now. <laughs> do you have lover? Jesus is my lover. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they used to do until we now see social media pictures of them getting married. Like, that is what is happening right now. So follow me on Instagram at Olive M. Modi. Follow her at I underscore am underscore Esther. And follow Silso at Silso. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a fantastic Wednesday, but enjoy this piece by Silso. Now you be my lover, lover. I don't want any other. I don't search all over, over. But I never see another. No, you know, because I know.
streets, you can sing. For you those can of you sing. who have not found Hell. a lover in 2018, the year is not yet over. The love exists. And don't worry, the Lord will provide you a lover. If not, try again next year. Amen. Amen. I, I receive it, Lord. <laughs> eh? What does it look like? To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.